So let's bring on some guests. So as Russell was saying, my first guest um, does this quarantine show um, as Moira Rose. So let's bring on. Um, let's well, oh, there. Oop, 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 I got you. I got you. I think. Uh, nope, I don't. There, 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 I am. there you are, Michael, popping up there. Surprise. Yes, me. <laughs> so Michael Jensen Berry, welcome. So where are you physically right now? Thank you. Um, right now, I am in Jersey City, New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, what's going on in Jersey City? Anything tonight? Uh, oh, God, I don't know. I've, even when there's not a pandemic, I'm not cool enough to know what's going on. In, <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually just got back. I've been quarantining a lot with my family in upstate New York. So oh, where in upstate? Like in Syracuse. Okay. So not that's, too, too far from you. Well, yeah, it's upstate. That's great. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So um, tell us about quarantine time. Yeah, it's uh, it started out as a little joke with my friends, um, but it's basically this Instagram TikTok show where, um, yeah, I wear a wig and it's Moira Rose and I always have a cup of tea. And each time it's either me trying a new adventure, like different exercises or like trying a spin bike for the first time, um, or just like giving little reminders to people to love themselves or try new things or don't give up hope or, or doing little shout outs to like teachers or nurses, you know, whatever, whatever pops into my head that I think feels positive that day. So for those who are unaware, Moira Rose is from the, the Canadian television show, Shits Creek. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you find Shits Creek? How, how did you get hooked onto that? I was actually kind of late to that particular party. My roommate here, Jonathan, who got me hooked on, he's the reason for all of this. I mean, he was the one who challenged me to do this in the beginning. Um, but he's a big Shits Creek fan. So I think it was roughly season four was when he got me to watch it. And I remember watching all four seasons and then going right back to the beginning, watching them all again. Um, it was just so beautiful and lovely and hilarious. And um, yeah, so now then I just became a lifelong fan. I was like, this is one of the greatest shows of all time. So have you watched the final episode? Is that, did you have, have. access? Yeah, oh, well, because we're both yet. such big fans. So we bought it on Amazon. And oh. I went back, that was the first time since then, I went back to the first episode and watched it all the way through to the end. And oh yeah, I was a teary mess. It was, it took me, I think, two days to like recover from that. Oh, well, 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 <laughs> I'm looking forward to it then. But, no spoilers, it's beautiful though. It's exactly So how would how you describe goes. Schitt's Creek? Um, Oh gosh, I think I'm gonna paraphrase some, I think it was a reporter, someone described Schitt's Creek as like a nicer, kinder version of the world we live in now. Where like everyone on that show, you know, cause it's like the, the people, the rich, very privileged people are forced to go to, you know, this small town and cause they get basically, I believe like Bernie Madoff. And it's sort of this like clash of cultures where the poor people in the town have no idea what to do with these rich people and the rich people have no clue what to do with them. And they sort of develop this beautiful, happy medium harmony where everyone kind of meets in the middle. Um, but it's nice because everyone feels just a little larger than life, um, but you can relate to all of them. They're all so grounded and real. And yeah, it's just a beautiful escape, I feel like, from the world we have now. And, and wonderful characters. You know, oh, the, the, yeah. the, 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 uh, the Rose family is a, a nice ensemble unit, but then the town, you know, with the side characters are um, always great as well. Everyone on that show is flawless. They're all brilliant in, in their own different way. And the actors, there are many that you'd recognize. You know, it's a Canadian television show, but there's several actors that you would recognize, like uh, Eugene Levy, oh, for uh, sure. who we remember from um, oh, uh, Second City Television, and mm -hmm. uh, where he worked with um, with Catherine O'Hara. Yes, they yes, and they make a, a great. Second, you know, I never really cared for uh, Eugene back in those days, but uh -huh. I just find him hysterical. You know, now oh, and so funny. With his son David, you know how how they they work so well together. With Dan Levy, yeah, because they, they Dan, yeah, it. Dan, yeah, the character's David. I know, I do the yeah. same thing. Like, yeah, you're like, oh, David, David Levy. Um, yeah, and then you know, Annie Murphy, who's Alexis, is just heartbreaking. You've got Ted, you've got Stevie, like all those wonderful. Oh, characters. I love the boyfriends. Both boyfriends are just really nice uh, to look at. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely not hard on the eyes. And oh, so and, uh, funny. Oh, oh, who's the the the, the helper there at the, the motel? Uh, Who basically like uh, oh, no, the, the guy, the Elliot. Oh, Roland. Ro Roland, <laughs> yes. Roland, yeah, who we've all and, seen in yes. so many movies. And, and also, wasn't he a regular on, was it Conan? I think on NBC, he was always the I guy in the so. audience as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, Russell, let's, uh, let's show some clips of Quarantine Time. Hello, you, and welcome to Quarantine Time. Now, I know many of you have been inquiring into the sobriquets of my various wigs, and so I thought I would introduce you to a few of my summer ladies. This is Sandra, a cushion-hearted gal with a song in her heart. Someone help me on that log. It should have been you. 
And this is Omar, who is always punctual, to say the least. Janice, who may be the belly bone of the group, but still has a wild, mercurial side. Lisbeth, who is the wizened one of the group, but still intrepid and up for new adventures, as long as there's a clean water closet and toilet paper, or even a bidet, that would work. And Sharon, the meticulous one who will step up to the plate at things like the annual pizza gala and say, no, Kimbe singer, not everybody wants vegan meat-free haggis. Now you're probably wondering why I have all of these wags. And to that I say, for some people, self-assuredness and assertiveness come very easy. As easy as slipping off a log or shelling peas. Mm -hmm. As two activities I've actually never partaken in, but they sound quite easy. And for some of us, self-confidence is not quite so facile and we need a little armor. So here is to whatever allows you to pop and lets your luminosity shine through. Cheers, friends. Well, hello you and welcome to family quarantine time. Oh, we're actually doing this. Okay. Mmm, so adorbs, but like I just had a La Croix and I don't want to hydrate again because then I'll get wilty. La Croix? Yeah, I don't actually have any tea right now. Oh, David, you're fine. Now, since many people, including you two, have had difficulty with their somnambular routines, I thought Mummy would read you a little bedtime story tonight. It's literally 7.30. Like, the sun is still out. Mmm, so sweet, but like, we're not really kiddos anymore. I mean, David is like 40. Oh my god. And even when we were kids, you used to just hire Anne Hesh to read to us. And like, as gifted of an actress as she is, she really wasn't great at character voices. Stop being so churlish. No wonder I didn't read to you when you were tiny babies. Look, it's called A is for Audra, Broadway's leading ladies from A to Z. Well, hello you, and welcome to quarantine time. Now, after literally numbers of requests, I have decided to acquiesce and participate in the ever-popular phonetic venture, the Accent Challenge. Now, I don't believe I have a particularly discernible accent, but I would like to introduce you to some of my favorite phraseologies. Somnambular Ultra Crepidarian, Macbethian Cauldron Stirrer, Bebe Bassanat, or hopefully not for a sticky bebe, or a particularly odiferous one. Floxinoxonide epilification, dry using that one in a Scrabble match, and of course, what list would be complete without disgruntled pelican? That's certainly a favorite. Well, I hope you enjoyed those, and in the words of my dear friend Tim Gunn, Few activities are as delightful as learning new vocabulary. So here is to learning new words, friends. <laughs> oh, Michael, very funny. You've got her phrasing Yay. down, the lilt in her voice. Oh, <laughs> and thank also you. The other, the other characters as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's oh, been a fun challenge is bringing in other people like the rest of the family. And I've done Cher and Britney Spears and Tanya Harding. And, oh, yeah. well, your eyebrows now are more conducive to David than they were oh. during that clip. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's what he's I got some lot. eyebrows. Yeah, people are like, you look like Eugene Levy, but you sound like Moira Rose. And it's like, I'll take it, <laughs> whatever it takes. Yeah. So, uh, how many TikTok followers do you have? Hundred and forty thousand. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, just under a hundred and forty thousand. Good for you. Well, I, I think you're going to have a few more following tonight. So uh, I, I see so. a lot of our, our, our comments there are, uh, are liking you. Oh, so, good. Okay, Michael, go back into the green room and uh, have some tea, okay? Great. We'll bring see you back soon. for the quiz. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. bye.